everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin if you guys are new here. I am here today to share with you some of my favorite sweets and treats to make during the holidays. Now during the holidays we get bombarded with cookie recipes and all these difficult um, family recipes. Now I have to say my family has some amazing cookie recipes that I could of course share with you guys but they are tedious, they take forever and quite frankly a lot of us just don't have time for that. So the two recipes that I'm sharing with you guys today are super simple recipes that you are essentially just putting together. And the best part about these recipes is you don't even have to pull out your mixer and you don't have to turn on your oven. So the two recipes that I'm sharing with you guys today are recipes that aren't specifically Christmas or holiday recipes, but they can be easily adapted and made into holiday recipes. The first one is a recipe that comes from my stepmom. She always made this recipe around the holidays and it kind of just brings me back to my childhood. And that recipe is called Yummy Heath Crunch. It's just a simple heath with a chocolate coating and you break it up into like brittle and it's super simple to put into like a cute little tin and to give away. This recipe is totally delicious and to be honest, it probably won't even leave your house because it's that good. So that is the first one. Um, I know there's a ton of variations of this recipe, but to be honest with you, this is the most simple that I have ever found and in my opinion, it tastes the best. So I have that recipe and then the second one is a kind of a recipe that my childhood best friend and her mom would always make and it was something that she would make a ton and us girls loved it and so it kind of was coined the name road trip mix. So it's not something that at all screams holidays but it was something that she would make and she would adapt it and she would change a few things to make it more holiday. Now it has a white chocolate coating so she would oftentimes add green or red food coloring for Christmas and she would change out the color of the M&M's, the ones that you get for that season. So there's plenty of things that can be changed to make it more festive and more holiday like. And so that one is just assembling a bunch of ingredients into a bowl, kind of like a trail mix, and then you cover it in a vanilla um, bark coating. So if you are interested in seeing the recipes that I made, keep on watching. So for the first recipe, which is the Yummy Heath Crunch, you're going to need one cup of sugar, two sticks of margarine. It has to be margarine. My stepmom always stresses that in the recipe, and I didn't trust her one day, and I didn't have margarine, and I tried to use butter, and it did not work. So it has to be margarine. And then you're going to need one king-size Hershey's bar, or any chocolate of your preference. I think it works best with milk chocolate rather than dark chocolate. Um, but that's just my personal preference and it needs to be equivalent to one king size bar. I actually had quite a few of the fun size candy bars left over from Halloween so I just um, unwrapped all those and that's what I'm using. So those are the simple ingredients that you're going to need for the Heath Crunch. Okay so we have moved on over to the stove top and I have this pan over about medium heat. Mine is more closer to medium, medium high and we're going to Put in both sticks of margarine and let that get start to get melted and then we're going to stump in the sugar. Okay, so now that the margarine has started to melt, we are going to dump in our sugar. And this is going to get mixed together until everything is well incorporated, all the butter is completely melted, and then we're going to st start to caramelize this. Okay, so now that all of the butter and sugar is melted, we are gonna wait until this comes up to a slight simmer, um, and what's gonna happen is it's going to start to thicken, and then the color is going to change from yellow to more of like a caramel color, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Now I've made this so many times that I don't bother using a candy thermometer, but if you are a little bit more nervous and you're, you're not really entirely sure what you're supposed to be looking for, you can stick a candy thermometer in and when it reads about 320 degrees Fahrenheit, you know you are ready to go. So mine is starting to come up to that rumble right now, if you guys can see. And you're just going to continue to keep stirring it every once in a while. Keep a very close eye on it because this is something that can go from good to bad quite quickly. Okay, and as you guys can see, it's really starting to rumble and this is exactly what you're looking for. You want it to just go just a little bit past this stage. So this is a good sign. Don't freak out if you get to where it starts to. Another step if you're unsure is you can take out a little bit of the mixture and pour it onto your covered sheet. And 
let it harden and if it hardens into what would be the crunch then you will know you're good where I know that this is still a little too light and it's probably not going to harden right so we know we need to keep going. Okay as you can see here the caramel is starting to turn to that nice golden brown color that we're looking for and this is where I'm actually going to take it off of the heat and I'm going to test it one more time. Because this is where I can go from good to burned really, really quickly. Okay, so now that the caramel is cooled down, I'm going to say it is right at the color that you want it to be, which is similar to that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pour this mixture right into the middle of your wax covered baking sheet. So now that that's in there, you're going to add on your Hershey bars. And I just like to let them sit for a second and start to melt. And then you can go in with a spatula and start to spread the chocolate over top. Trying not to mix the chocolate in with Okay, so once the chocolate's fully covered the top, you can pop this in the micro or in the microwave. You can pop this entire tray in your refrigerator if you have room to let it completely harden and then we'll crack it apart. Okay, so for our next recipe, you're basically just assembling. You're melting some chocolate and you're assembling. So the items that you're gonna need for this is M&Ms. So the great part about this recipe is that you can customize it to any holiday or you can have it any time of year. So I was looking for the Christmas colored M&M's and I wasn't able to find them at the two stores that I checked. So I just got regular ones. I know they have the Easter ones, they have the Halloween ones. So that's a really great part about this. Um, you're also gonna need Cheerios. You're also going to need pretzel sticks, just thin ones. And optional is peanuts. So this is something that obviously if you have somebody in your family or you're gifting this to somebody that has a peanut allergy or you are somebody that has a peanut al allergy, this is something that can be totally left out. You're also going to need some vanilla bark. This is just the white vanilla bark. Um, great like melting, which is just a um, vanilla flavored coating. Um, you're going to need some sort of large container to mix this all in. I actually like using like my big stock pot. I think it makes it easier, especially if you're doing big batches. And you're going to need a parchment lined cookie sheet. So to begin, I have over medium heat, over medium heat, I have um, kind of a makeshift double boiler. As long as you have a pot, um, a small like saucepan or something, and a glass bowl, you can make a double boiler. Or you can even melt this in the microwave um, in a glass bowl or microwavable container for about 30 seconds at a time, mix it until it's smooth so you don't burn it. But what I did is I have a sauce pot here that I put maybe an inch to an inch and a half of water in the bottom. I'm gonna let that get nice and hot and then I put the glass bowl on top. The key with this though is you don't want the water boiling because you don't want it to melt, um, to burn the coating. And you also don't want the glass bowl to hit the water. So I'm gonna let that go and get nice and warm so that we can so that we can start melting our coating. And while that water is getting nice and hot, we are going to start mixing all of these ingredients into our big stock pot. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the pretzels because that's the part that I like to have the most of. This is totally by playing it by ear. I think I have about two cups worth in the pot right now. And then I'm gonna add in my Cheerios, which is about a cup and a half to two cups of that as well. The M&Ms, you can never have too many, so just play that by ear. And then the peanuts. I like to go a little bit lighter on the peanuts. I want them to be known that they're in there, but I don't wanna whole ton of them. Okay, so that's what that's gonna look like. And then I'm going to use just my um, spatula. 
try to mix this all together so we can see where our mix is lacking. So I think we have plenty of Cheerios. I think I'm going to add a little bit more pretzels. Which I'm going to add this right off the bag. And I think it needs some more m &Ms. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump the rest of those m &Ms. And I'm going to kind of just mix that. You want to make sure you're not breaking up the pretzel and stuff. And I actually am going to add a few more. I'm going to add a few more Cheerios. And a little bit more peanuts. So like I said, this is something that you just kind of mix to your own liking. That looks about good. So now that this is all mixed together, and it looks like obviously all the heavy stuff is going to fall to the bottom, but once you get the chocolate coat or the vanilla coating in there, it's all going to mix up perfectly. Okay, so back over at the double boiler, it looks like the water is just about to a simmer, and then I'm going to put my bowl back on top. The bowl is not super hot to touch, and that's exactly what you want. You want the bottom to get warm so that it will melt the chocolate, but you don't want it to get too hot. So I'm going to pop in a few of these cubes. Okay, so the candy coating is completely melted, and it looks like that. So I'm going to take this off the water, carefully because the steam is very hot. I'm going to turn off my stove and I'm just going to pull this aside because we're done with it. And then very carefully I'm going to dump the white chocolate or coating mixture into big pot. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to lightly stir this all together without breaking up the pretzel. Okay, so when it's all mixed together, it should look similar to that, which doesn't look very appetizing at the moment. Okay, so you're going to take this mixture and you're going to pour it out onto a parchment uh, lined cookie sheet. You might have to do two, two cookie sheets depending on how much you make or how big of batches you make because you don't want it to pile up too high. I might actually have to do two cookie sheets. And you're going to spread it all out. like so, and then you're gonna har let this harden until it's completely hard, and then it will break apart kind of like a brittle as well. All right guys, so it is as easy as that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you give these recipes a try, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope you guys have a great holiday season, and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye guys.